Freedom Watch Afghanistan, I'm Tech Sergeant Gene Taylor. Three additional U.S. brigades will soon deploy to Operation Enduring Freedom. According to U.S. News & World Report, a request for more troops by General David McKiernan, the commander of NATO forces in Afghanistan, has been granted. That means between 12 and 15,000 additional U.S. troops could be in place by the end of the year. Three brigades will be a considerable increase to U.S. forces in Afghanistan. At the moment, there are approximately 34,000 U.S. troops in the theater, with 15,000 under NATO command and another 19,000 operating independently, primarily in the east, along the border with Pakistan. The first soldiers are slated to come from the U.S. Army's 10th Mountain Division. They should move out late this year, between November and January, while two other brigades are likely to arrive sometime in the spring or summer of next year. General McKiernan has also asked for more troops to reinforce the 101st Airborne Division in Regional Command East. However, receiving troops beyond the currently approved three brigades will require shifting troops from Iraq and will depend heavily on improving conditions there. Maintaining a secure Afghan-Pakistan border remains a priority for coalition forces. Marine Sergeant Jeremy Ross introduces us to soldiers whose everyday responsibilities include this crucial region. For the soldiers of the 527th Military Police Company, the nature of their mission in eastern Afghanistan is defined as much by what they do as where they do it. I'm standing right now at the top of the Khyber Pass. It's the busiest border crossing between Pakistan and Afghanistan. As a matter of fact, if you look down into this valley here right over my right shoulder, you can actually see Pakistan. This border area is part of a 900 square kilometer battle space operated by the 527th MPs. It makes the company the only MP unit in Afghanistan to operate their own area of operations. Our primary mission is AMP development. We are sent to theater to be AMP developers. We also have the, uh, the responsibilities of owning a battle space and commanding a FOB. So that comes with FOB defense and uh, really anything else that comes up in the AO. Military police are trained to handle virtually any civil or military situation, but they typically do it in a supporting role. These skills will come in handy not just in their police training mission, but in managing their diverse area of operations. Because of our civilian law enforcement mission that we have back in Germany, that helps us train these AMPs and brings them up to standard. And I think you need that kind of mindset here because it is kind of a kid's glove area. So whether it's conducting patrols or just passing on some knowledge to their A&P brethren, their skills will be put to the test over the next several months as they continue to manage their interesting AO. Marine Sergeant Jeremy Ross, Nangarhar Province, Afghanistan. The first platoon of the 63rd Chemical Company has taken fire twice over the past month while performing convoy duty. Each time, they fell back on their training, returned fire from their gun trucks, forced the enemy to retreat, and carried on with their mission, all while taking no losses and sustaining no injuries. Yesterday at a ceremony on Bagram Airfield, the first platoon received the Combat Action Badge for their actions under fire. This was our first contact for anybody in the platoon, so I wasn't real sure how any of them react, would react, but they reacted great. I mean, they, they fell back on their training. They, they did the, their battle drills and crew drills to a T. Uh, they executed when time needed, so that's why we're able to be standing here today receiving our combat action badge. Oh yeah, I was scared and I was also reacting, but I'm also proud of the guys, what they did, how they reacted as far as the training we had done up thus far and uh, basically trying to do it redundantly so it'd be muscle memory when they go out there on the roads. And they did good. All in all, I think we, we did a good job. We did what our training did, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we're gonna take everybody home. So they can keep shooting if they want, and we're just gonna keep firing back because we unleash more and more ammo every time they decide to shoot at us. That's all the time we have for this edition of Freedom Watch Afghanistan. To see today's stories or previous editions of our show, you can find our program on the web just point your browser at pentagonchannel.mil. From all of us here at Bagram Airfield, I'm Tech Sergeant Gene Taylor. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.